new arrival, the Comics 35, um, just arrived today. So this is from 1983, uh, 1983, I believe 1983, um, Hong Kong, I guess, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, interesting little machine. Um, keyboard is surprisingly feels nice to use. Built in joystick, of course. Built in joystick. Um, haven't powered it up yet. Uh, um, I have opened it up. I think it's just, yeah, say nine volts in, nine volts DC in. We've got cassette input output and, um, yeah, UHF out. So I don't have, I don't believe my TV does that. So I'm going to have to see about convenience to composite. Um, so I've just figured out how to get into it. Uh, remove the two screws at the bottom. And we've got these four little holes here. I want to push back, push in and push back. Actually, probably once you've done these, you can actually open this up a little bit at the back. You can't get it over the on off switch though, like that. And then very carefully, you've got four clips here. Push the clips in one. Um, it's I've already <laughs> prepared earlier, but yeah, push the clips in. Push the clips in at the bottom. There we go. Clips are off, and then just push it backwards to get over the on-off switch. There we go, and voila. So keyboard is soldered on by the ribbon cables, which is actually pretty decent. Um, yeah, so there's a 7805 linear regulator. So I guess, yeah, if you stick in nine volts, um, it'll get five volts out of that. Um, otherwise a pretty standard cheapo computer for the time. Let's have a closer look. So this is using a bit of a bizarre chip, the RCA 1802, first CMOS microprocessor apparently, uh, famous for being not the first microprocessor in space, that was the Intel 4004, but the uh, first microprocessor to control a spacecraft apparently and, and satellites. Um, and also went to Galileo, uh, on the Galileo to Jupiter. So that's the, um, there's a set of four that come in the family, all work together. Um, we've got some RAM. It's got 32K, well it's called the 35 because it's got 32K of user RAM and 3K of video RAM or something apparently. Expansion port. Um, that's a UHF modulator uh, there. So some of these, um, I hate these ceramic disc capacitors. I might replace some of those. I'll replace, I'll replace that with a switching, switching version. Um, replace that with a blue LED, eh? <laughs> so that is, yeah, the, the Comex 35. So unfortunately, this is all I've got. This is all I've got with it. I will um, try and figure out how to get the composite video working from that. Um, I wish there was a, there should be a standard way, but you know, you've different computers got different different ways of doing it. Um, so I'll do some investigation anyway. Maybe it's the same, similar to what we do for the ZX eighty one. I don't know. I'm not that clever. 
let's see so amateur hour as always every hour um i just figured out it was center positive but of course i forgot to change my power supply over to center positive didn't i that's still on center negative anyway um nine volts let's see there we go drawing 200 milliamps power led is on turn the light off can you see it there we go power led is on and it makes a little <clears throat> a little boot up noise let me just take that off the holder there oh. <laughs> so working nicely um fingers crossed i don't screw it up too badly so first thing i'll do is just um replace that regulator and then um also figure out how to uh, get composite out of it.